being an artist over all these years, there's a bunch of things that we learn, and forgive me if I repeat some common themes that we've heard today, but I'm going to go through with it and tell you about O Positive and what we're all about. Some of the things that we've learned over time is that there's no paycheck. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Don't get me laughing. There's also no retirement package. And on top of all of that, because of what we do and how we live as artists, musicians, writers, and everything else, there's no health insurance. However, as you've learned today and as we know, we have a tendency to stick together. We throw loft parties for each other when the rent's due. We let each other borrow our pickup trucks because every one of us has had a Toyota pickup truck at some point. We also have a tendency to help each other out in many other ways. We support our friends who are bands. We buy their records when no one else will. Um, and sometimes we're lucky we get some friends that happen to be maybe a doctor or a dentist. So O Positive was born three years ago with these thoughts in mind. Over a couple of beers and a lot of conversations, we came up with this thought. Could we, as artists and musicians, get together and exchange what we do with our neighbors who are doctors, healthcare providers, complementary care providers, and a dentist, and say, what we do is as valuable as what you do for our community. And it's the O Positive Festival. Hi, I'm Alex. I'm a freelance artist and I live in the Hudson River Valley at the foot of the Catskills in Kingston, New York, where I have the best neighbors in the world and we're working together to make a creative existence more sustainable in a brutal economy. This year we realized a lot of us don't have health care. We also realized that a lot of doctors like good paintings and good rock and roll. So we're organizing the O Positive Festival of Art and Music, where participating artists get paid in, instead of money, medical and dental services donated by local health care providers. Bands, artists, and filmmakers are contributing either because they need the care or because they care about the cause. It's bands you listen to on your iPod, finally getting wisdom, teeth pulled, eyes examined, and chronic pains physical therapized. O Positive is a completely community-run, grassroots, band-aid solution to inaccessible health care for uninsured artists, bartering the art of medicine for the medicine of art. It's the O Positive Festival. Make a donation to get it started and watch it grow. That was our idea. We had to convince a community to join us. We had to ask all of our neighbors, and we had to ask all the artists we know, would they actually put up a 20-foot, 30-foot high paste up or mural in our neighborhood in exchange for seeing a dentist, in exchange for seeing a doctor? And it's a scary proposition because most of our friends hadn't seen a doctor or a dentist in years, so you don't know what's going to happen. But they said yes, and they sent in their artwork. And our neighbors said, this is a bit of a crazy idea, but we'll help you out. We'll donate the sides of our buildings. The artwork came from all over the world. I think the first year we may have even had somebody send some, something, something in from Australia. And we were pretty surprised, and we asked our other neighbors with empty storefronts, because as we've heard over and again today, many empty storefronts in all the river towns up and down the Hudson Valley, Kingston is no different. Can we use your empty storefronts to put bands in? And they said, yeah, and we asked all of our friends and musicians, hey, I know you've never played a gig where you'll get to see a massage therapist, but wanna do it? Sure, we'll give it a shot. And they came and they did it. But here's where the magic happens. Here's where things begin to change. Here's where change that we all talk about all the time actually happens. And this is the clinic. And these two bands right here, one, guy got, one band had nine fillings, one band had 13. It was a race to the finish. In the bottom of this clinic, we built a green room. And in that green room, the access to care, the wall, broke down. Because in that green room, the artists and musicians got to hang out with the doctors. And then at night, they got to see each other perform. And they got to walk around the neighborhood and see the artwork 
and they got to say, hey, you're just like I am. You love music, you love art, you're a doctor, that's awesome. And the doctors were like, no, you're awesome. It was like big love fest. <laughs> but we had to get the community involved, and here's how we did it. With this hospital wristband, we said, you come to this festival, you get access to everything, all the art, all the music, for whatever you can give us. We asked for 25 bucks, we took $2. Sometimes we took $250. We couldn't believe it. So we thought, wow, is anybody going to show up? And they did. First year, 1,000 people, 48 providers across the spectrum, one amazingly tired and overworked dentist. $43,000 if you were to count dollars, although this is all about barter and exchange, but we have to in this society talk about money. $43,000 in care. 100 artists and musicians who we asked and begged to come and 30 volunteers, and I'd love to, I also want to share with you that if you volunteer for the O Positive Festival for eight hours of volunteer work, you get to go to this clinic also, which is kind of great. But what we didn't realize was that the doctors were the rock stars, that the complementary care providers, that the acupuncturist, that the energy healer, all of these folks were the people that really, 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 really made it happen because they said this to us, this is why we got into this. There's no paperwork. <laughs> There's no money. This is amazing. The bands left. They went on tour. We started to get emails from Iowa, from all over the place. I just heard about this festival. We thought, wow, that's really amazing. The artists went home. They created, they went back and told their friends, they said, I just did a 30-foot mural, and I saw an occupational therapist for the wrist that's been bothering me for the last 10 years, and I got a massage. Our neighbors left pretty happy. But the thing we didn't realize was those same neighbors who have businesses, one or two bars, the first nine venues that we use, that they had the busiest weekend they had all year. And they all came back to us, whether they wanted to be involved in the beginning or didn't understand what we were going to do, and they came back to us and they said something really, really important to them. Bottom line, busiest weekend of the year. Can you do it next weekend? <laughs> we said no, but our local brewery said, you do it again next year, we'll make you a beer. And for every pint of beer we sell, we'll give you a dollar. Well, they threw it down, so we had to do it again. So going into year two, we wondered, honestly, to be really honest with you, a bunch of artists, musicians, volunteering their time, wondered, can we do it again? Was it a fluke? We really did. We were very concerned. To our surprise, we increased all of our numbers. We doubled our dentists. <laughs> Believe me, that was like pulling teeth. <laughs> Sorry. It's been a long day. We gave away $56,000 in care, if you were to count it. But this time, we had to have musicians apply because we only had nine venues and only so many doctors and 100 bands applied for 35 spots. We had 35 artists who all applied and were accepted. And we had 40 volunteers. But what we really realized after two years was there was a little bit of a disconnect. We were taking care of the artists and musicians in the community. We were doing what we've been talking about. We were building the community. We were contributing to the wellness. We were keeping artists and musicians in their studios, in the recording studio, we were trying to keep them healthy for just one weekend. But what about our neighbors? And our doctors said to us after, we've got to expand this. How do we expand it? And we offered last year a free public health expo. And at that expo, you got to talk to folks from Planned Parenthood. You got to do immediate HIV screening. You got to get a voucher for a colonoscopy. You got to talk to the American Cancer Society. And we began to see that everybody was jumping on board to this. So we offered community yoga classes throughout the neighborhood, nutrition walks throughout the farmer's market, and a gong bath. Anybody here been to a gong bath? It, excellent. It's amazing. It's the most popular thing that the community does at the festival. This gong is played in the room. It's three feet around. The room vibrates. You think you're levitating. And there's a line to get in. It's unbelievable. So that left the doctors really happy and left our neighborhood, we'd like to think, a little bit better off. 
We also expanded our venues. This is the interior of the old Dutch church in uptown Kingston. It sits 900 people. This performer got up in front of those 900 people on opening night and said, I want to thank you all for being here and contributing what you did because I had $700 worth of dental care done on this mouth this morning. And then he played a beautiful, amazing show. So we all left pretty happy. We doubled our attendance from year one. We have 85 providers now that help us out. We're up to four dentists. We're almost up to $80,000 in care last year, if you were to count it in real dollars. We had 150 bands and musicians from across the country and around the world apply for last year's festival. 45 artists, and like I mentioned, the Community Expo. So at the end of three years, we had to sit back as an organization and say, what have we done? And can we keep this going? And we realized something. That person to person, this community was beginning to make itself better. That what started off with one or two restaurants in a neighborhood, and it's not just O positive, but it's O positive attracting people to that neighborhood, are now many bars and restaurants, many more people, apartments that are hard to find. We realized that we had broken down many barriers beyond just access to care, but actually began to understand who our neighbors were. So now where do we go? Now that we've established this festival, what do we do with it? Now we grow positive. We're partnering up with the YMCA in Kingston and the South Pine Street Farm. And we're gonna have the farm actually be a venue this year. And actually I can't wait to see a bunch of kids from Brooklyn with skinny jeans and beards work in the land. <clears throat> On top of that, we also started Radio O Positive, so you can actually hear the performers that were in O Positive over the years in interviews. But maybe the most important thing we did over the past year is we built this playbook. Because we'd heard from so many people and we've done lectures in different parts of the country and people said, can we do this in our neighborhood? It took us three years to actually sit down as a group and say, how did we do that? Do you remember what you did for your part? And the art part had to write their part and the music part, their part, and on and on and on through everything up to the sponsorships. And we wrote this playbook. And at the end of the day, we had a 71-page document. And we said, we are going to give this now away. Who's going to want it? Who's going to be able to do this? And I'm really happy to announce today that the first O Positive Festival outside of New York State is this November 15th, 16th, and 17th in the Mission Creek District of San Francisco. <laughs> now, these folks are gonna be taking care of themselves. They're gonna be given the tools that we have. We're gonna support them, but they're gonna decide who they wanna take care of, how they wanna take care of them. We're excited because we don't know what it's gonna be. We can't wait to see. After this, once we get this going, and if you could dream with me for just one second, because we've gotten all these emails from all over the country, if we can prove this works there, where else can we prove that it happens? And at the end of the day, I would like to leave you with this. This is a line that we use often, but comes from first aid manuals. It's the first thing you're taught when a victim is bleeding. Apply pressure and elevate. So when you leave today, I want you all to think about what in your neighborhood seems insurmountable and what you can do to apply pressure and elevate and stop the bleeding in your neighborhood. Because once you stop the bleeding, the healing begins. Have a great day.